Hello, folks, and welcome back to English 403503 with me, Dr. Matt Barton. Uh, and in this lecture, we'll be looking at online collaboration tools. A lot of this stuff will be very, very useful for you in this class, uh, for everything from the blogging project to whatever sort of uh, writing projects you might, group projects you might get up to in other courses, but uh, also for solo projects, and more specifically, uh, these tools will be useful for you once you enter the workplace, you know, especially if you're working at a you know, fairly up-to-date company, they may already be using these, if not more advanced tools than these, so you'll have some, uh, you know, be able to hit the ground running with that. Uh, or, uh, you know, again, especially if you're in professional communication or you get a job where they're hiring you based on your, uh, you know, expertise with communication skills and technologies, you might actually be able to uh, introduce these tools into your workplace, uh, teach other people how to use them, and basically be the, uh, the computer whiz. <laughs> <laughs> of their dreams and you know it's just a lot of fun you know a lot of people they, they kind of tense up when you start talking about collaboration and group projects and they you know they sort of groan and it's like oh man i'd just rather do it myself well i mean of course you would right but you know, it's just in the you know once you uh other than an english class you know you're probably never going to be writing anything uh, just by yourself i mean you're almost always working with other people on things especially in any kind of business uh, scenario. So it's really uh, useful instead of just trying to avoid, you know, every kind of group project uh, to really get in there and try to figure out like, uh, you know, what are some good strategies, not just technology, of course, but the uh, uh, communication strategies you need to uh, fit in those people skills. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of courses you could take that will help you with that uh, at this university. But, but here we will be looking specifically at the uh, software. Okay, first we'll look at some tools for planning and collaborating, sort of, you know, getting the, the ball rolling, as it were. Uh, then delve into some tools for research, you know, how to find journal articles, how to find books, ebooks, you know, whatever the case may be. And then finally, once you uh, have a pretty good idea of the sources and the, and the topic and the argument and all that good stuff, how do you actually get to writing this with other people? How can you keep track of who's doing what and keep it from getting uh, too messy and chaotic? And then uh, finally, how to revise all that uh, so you can proofread it and try to get, you know, all those different voices uh, in harmony, as it were. Uh, so quite a bit of stuff. I might be uh, moving fairly quickly here, but again, the idea is not for you in this lecture, obviously, to uh, master these tools by any means. Uh, I just want to show you what, it, what they look like, uh, sort of give you some ideas, things you can play around with on your own time or with your group. Uh, I'm just trying to give you some, some options here. Uh, some idea of what's available, and then, uh, you know, maybe one of these, one or more of these tools, you might say, oh, that looks really cool, I'd like to try that. <laughs> hey, great. Uh, you might look at one of these and say, I would never use that. You know, that's okay, too. I just want you to know that it's out there and uh, what it does. Okay, so let's see. First up on our little menu here is Zoom, and you've probably been getting a lot of experience with Zoom. Let me see if I can add the, uh, add this to my little presentation here there we go <laughs> okay and so this is what the zoom menu looks like if you log in and we can go to a new meeting let's go ahead and do that okay and again i will have to add that screen so you can see what i'm looking at Okay, so not a lot here, obviously. <laughs> I probably don't want to Zoom with myself. <laughs> uh, but, you know, this is a basic collaboration tool. Obviously, you can uh, invite your friends, your group members in here. You can have a chat with the videos. I mean, you're probably familiar with this from your, uh, your schoolwork already. Uh, but one of the things that people don't often play around with as much, if you're hosting the meeting, and you can make other people the host here under participants, you can say, I want this... You know, maybe I got Larry here. Let's say I can make Larry a co-host. And then Larry can do some of this stuff too. But the uh, share screen is a pretty powerful tool. So let me open this. And I can go to the uh, whiteboard tool. Okay. Again, I don't know if you can see. Looks like you can't. <laughs> That's kind of strange. Let's see if I can get this expanded out where you can see it. Da, 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 da. Add source, screen capture, smart selection, boom. Okay, so there is the whiteboard. And if you're in here with your friends, you know, everybody can see what you're doing here. You can write on this. 
You can add text to this. And, uh, you know, as I said, everybody else on the Zoom call can see what you're doing here. And you can, once you're done with this, you can save it and download it. Uh, so that's a pretty cool way to communicate other than just, you know, the video and the, and the conferencing. So let me go ahead and exit out of that. Get back to this. Another tool here is the, uh, well, the polls. But that share screen, again, uh, another feature, another thing you can do with that is open up your Word account or your Google Doc or whatever you're working with. And then everybody can see this, the document at the same time. And that's a good way to uh, to draft and edit. Again, it's a lot better than just emailing a document back and forth or trying to get everybody together in a room to look at a document. Sometimes this is better. Uh, so that's uh, Zoom. That's about all I want to say about that at the moment. Uh, Google is a very powerful suite of tools. Uh, Google uh, Drive. Uh, here's what that looks like. And this is all free. You know, of course, uh, you know, if they're not selling, if you don't have to pay for it, you know, you are the product or whatever that expression is. Uh, who knows how they make their money. But it's it's so it's, it's, the thing I like about Google as opposed to some of these other tools is it's very easy. Most A lot of people are running Chrome, uh, the browser, so it's, it's very easy to get these tools uh, up and running. Uh, it's really, you know, the collaboration is built into just about everything. It's easy to share documents. Uh, you usually don't have to download and install any software, uh, which is very nice uh, for people. Uh, but, you know, some people are reluctant to use it. They don't like the, you know, the IP issues or whatever, or the security issues or whatever the case may be. Uh, but just putting all that aside, you know, we can look and see why you might want to use a tool like this. Yeah, going back to my... So let's just say you want to make a PowerPoint. Uh, well, the Google product that does that is called Google Slides. I'm actually using it here. And I can just click that button there to share. And if there was somebody online I wanted to work with on this, uh, they would be able to pop in and we could be uh, going through the document together, commenting. I don't know if the comment button will show up here since I'm... Oh, there it is. So even though I'm just it's just me, <laughs> you know, I could uh, open up some comments and say, you know, this slide could use another bullet point or let's put a picture on this slide you know, whatever the case may be there. Uh, I could present and run it through. You know, you might want to use this in conjunction with the Zoom again. So you could, uh, they could be listening to the PowerPoint and making comments that way. Uh, down here, you know, we can add notes down there in the speaker notes section for the other group members to see. And let's see, this explore button. Yeah, I think this will help me to connect it to other well, there's the layouts and things if you wanted to make uh, use a template for that. I don't want to get too hung up on uh, <laughs> Google Slides. Uh, but the point is just it's very easy to get other people involved in this, and they can work on the uh, document together. And then one other thing, and this is true also of uh, the Google, uh, what's it called, Documents, Google Docs. I think that's what that's called if you're writing. Let me get one of those up so you can see what that looks like. Uh, here's some notes we were taking. Uh, okay, so you might be using this to take notes or work on your document, and you want you might be worried about well, what if I want to delete something or what if I make some changes to it? Uh, you know, basically, what if I screw this up? <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to mess this up for the group or anything. But you really don't need to be worried about that because if you go under File, uh, there's a a ribbon or a, a, a tab, I guess, called File version history and then if we look at the version history we can actually go back and look at all the past saves uh, of the document we could roll it back we could look at what it looked like on august 9th you know so maybe I accidentally deleted something back you know today uh, no problem i could just go back and look at this one of these earlier versions pull the paragraph back out and, and be good and you can even uh, this this name versions is kind of interesting what that lets you do, you can make a, uh, you know, let's just say you made some big changes or you're about to make some big changes. You could say, I want to name the current version and say uh, version before Matt's big edits or whatever. Okay, something like this. And then just go to town, not even worried about anything because I can always just go back here once I'm done editing and say, look at the version history, look at the name versions, and, you know, boom, I could go right back to that version. Uh, something else that's neat about this, uh, you might have seen that in the uh, 
that screen I just had it on. Let me go back to this for a second. So you can actually see in here, uh, it will color code things based on who did the editing. So you can see here, it's kind of this, I'm kind of this, uh, uh, what color is that? Kind of a, kind of a light green, I guess. <laughs> Not too good with my colors. Uh, but this is kind of useful if you want to see like who did what and, uh, you know, how many, how much stuff did one person contribute? You can just look at the color coding uh, to see that. And then, of course, there's other tools here like the add comment button is one we use a lot uh, with this group. Nice uh, article, you know, whatever. Comment. And then uh, when Sharon comes in or Kyoko, uh, they can click this button just to get rid of the comment. Maybe this was like a tip or a revision. Maybe I said something like check spelling. You know, I don't just make it stuff up, right? But uh, they can say, okay, I did, I've done that. And they can click that checkbox just to get rid of this. Uh, they can also expand this and reply to it to get, get, get a, you know, a fairly extensive discussion on that point. You know, whatever the case may be. And again, these are also saved. Uh, so just because you click on a comment and delete it, it's not gone forever. You can uh, go back and, and get that, you know, in the archive and bring the comment back if you accidentally deleted it. So... A very powerful tool. Uh, let's see, Google. Uh, there's probably other stuff we could say about Google. Oh, oh yes. Uh. <sighs> you can tell I'm in my element here. I try not to just overwhelm you with stuff. I know that's, uh, you know, I tend to get a little, little too excited about this business. But uh, there's something called the Google Jam Boards. And I haven't heard too many people talking about these, but I, I think they're pretty cool. And it's kind of like that... Uh, uh, that Zoom whiteboard I was showing you a while ago. You know, you've got the paint brushes and things. You, know, you can mark on this. You can add notes to it. You can bring in images from online. Uh, you can add a text box. You know, basic stuff like this, but it's kind of like a slide. Uh, so you can make additional slides, and then you know, your friends could also be in on this at the same time, and they could be working on their own slides. You can flip through this and make like a quick sort of quick and dirty presentation with this. It's kind of fun. And they call this the jam board, I guess, because it's kind of, uh, you know, something you might want to do before a meeting. If you just want to, you know, quickly sketch up some notes and you don't want anything that looks like a Microsoft Word document, you know, or something boring like that, you could use this uh, tool here to kind of, you know, maybe you want to have the, you know, the mind map type scenario. Thesis, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then make another ball down there and, you know, put something, you know, kind of that uh, brainstorming scenario. So, you know, I like stuff like this because a lot of people, they, they there's something about drawing and kind of getting a more tactile, tactile experience. You know, if they're, if they're making lines and <laughs> something, it just kind of frees up the creative juices a little bit in ways that the, uh, you know, just working in a Word document might not achieve. So that's jam boards and you can make those here in the Google Drive folder. You just say more. Google Jamboard, off to go. And there's also Google Drawings of course, which which probably does most of the stuff as the jam board, except it wouldn't have those uh, slides. So it'd be a little bit harder to make a you know quick and dirty presentation with it. Uh, anyway, again I could spend all day talking about this, but we will move on. Uh, Trello. Yes, Trello is one of my favorite tools. I use this extensively. And this is a really great way to do a, a to-do list or a schedule for yourself, um, keep you uh, more productive or to work with the team. Uh, so here's uh, the way I would recommend that you use this. Let's do a quick, um, quick board here. We'll just do the basic board. Uh, yes, let's just call this uh, sample <laughs> collaboration. Okay, so really what it all really is, is kind of like a poster board where you've got like uh, post-it notes up there for everybody. So what I like to do is say something like high priority items. Uh, have a list of that and then maybe over here mid priority or something. Might help to spell it correctly. Or just call it a middle priority. And then this is might be low priority. Let's just start with this idea first. 
Uh, okay, so we... Oh, I didn't make that one. Go ahead and add the list. So then you're adding these cards. And you could think about a big project, like a, a research paper, and how you might break up that big project into small steps. Uh, or you could think about a, like this blogging project and all the stuff that needs to get done before the end of the week, and so on and so forth. I use this for my planning of my classes. Uh, but the nice thing about this is you can make a a, a stack called done. <laughs> so then when you wake up in the you know in the morning, you make yourself a list of things that you want to get done. Let's say make a presentation. Uh, upload the file, right? You're just making stuff up. So you make your little list of things that you want to get done, and then as you're doing them, you can just Click that guy, drag him over there to done, and <laughs> you know, pretty by the end of the day, you get this uh, done stack, you know, nicely uh, piled up, and it really does kind of make you feel good. You get a better sense, you know. I think if you want to be more productive, uh, something like this that makes it visible, you can see the stuff you're getting done. You know, that feels more satisfi satisfying uh, somehow. Uh, I don't know how it works. It's like a psychological thing. But once you've done this, you know, if you get up tomorrow, you don't want to look at all that done pile. You can just say Ar archive all the cards in this list, and that'll take it off of here. You can get to it again later. Uh, but it's nice because you have that record so that later on, again, especially in a collaboration situation, you know, if a question might come up, well, you know, did you, wh what did Barton do? <laughs> well, I can have my, I can bring up my done list and see all the stuff that I've accomplished there. And, you know, in the collaboration, you could, you know, easily add cards and put people's names on it. Let's say this was, uh, find two articles for the paper. Just say that was the, the card there, right? And then we can go into change members. So you could put somebody that you invited to the board. You could assign them the task. Uh, you can also use labels for things. Um, so there's all kinds of different ways to organize this. Uh, always err on the side of just keep it really simple because the more complicated you make it people will get intimidated and not want to come in and mess with it uh, so I like to keep it really basic like this uh, but again really nice easy way to collaborate and I've seen people use this for brainstorming it's really good for software as well if you're working on some kind of coding project you can have lists of like high bugs <laughs> or like features that have to be there uh, then have like a wish list thing where it's not really key but you know if somebody's got some time they might want to jump on that and you can also have different done piles right you can have matt's done pile uh, frank's done pile uh, Alyssa's done pile and then you know as they come in they could drag their uh you know cards onto their respective piles again keeping a record of who who's done what and who's being more productive and, and so on so that's trello again free just go to trello.com Okay, and I think that brings us finally to Teams, and this is Microsoft's product, and of course it's huge, and it can do uh, amazing things, but it's also probably the most complicated uh, of the list. This, this one is the one that, uh, to me, is probably the most intimidating, uh, just looking at it, but once you get in here and start messing with it, it's actually pretty powerful. And the nice thing about this is it's all uh, based on Microsoft's products, like Microsoft Word, uh, the PowerPoint, you know, so it, it's basically software everybody's used at some point, you know, and hopefully you, you'll have access to it through the school. Uh, but most businesses would probably have the Microsoft Office suite and have access to this Teams product. And so with this, you just create a team up here. And what this does for you, it kind of keeps everything together. So if you're working on this project, a blogging project or research paper, Whatever the case may be, you can have everybody that's involved in that here. So you're instead of emailing back and forth, you're, you're conversing here with this conversation tool, right? So you have the, the thread of the conversation in one spot. You can upload all the documents you need for the project here. You can, um, it's got a tool similar to the, well, you can see all the different tools here. So it's got the whiteboard there. This also has a, a task list or just a simple list. So all of the things that you saw, basically anything the Google uh, Google Office or what do they call it, Google Drive can do, uh, this can do as well, plus a few extra things. Uh, so really, really powerful. So I'll just show you what this looks like. 
So if you uh, are using Teams, you can say upload a file, or I want to make a new Word document or PowerPoint, whatever the case may be. And you have to have, you know, this has built in. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like it's got Zoom built in. I don't think they call it Zoom, but it, you know, you can have the video conferencing built into this, which is nice. You say meet now. So if you didn't want to have like Google Docs and Zoom open, let's say, you could just use Teams, and it would have all that functionality in one product. Uh, but let's go ahead and say new document. So this is what I created earlier. Uh, and again, just like with the Google Drive, you can have everybody else in the team could come here and look at this document. They could comment on it. They could use this conversation bar. You know, as you're typing, you know, there could be other people working on this. And this will all it'll keep records of everything. You can go back in later and look at the earlier versions. Let's see, where is the... The versions on this. You know, I might have to tinker around with this to find the, uh, you know, how this one does the versioning, but I'm sure <laughs> it does have it. Maybe because there's only, I haven't really saved anything yet. Uh, but as you started working on this, it would, uh, yeah, comments. Uh, you know, it would save the various versions and you can go back and look at. Uh, the earlier stuff. Uh, there was something else about this I thought was neat. Get out of here. Yeah, the calendar's built into it. Oh, this is your personal calendar. So you can sync with this. Uh, this is for teachers. Yes, get back to this. Thank you. <laughs> you see, it kind of gets overwhelming pretty quickly. So let's just go back into our sample team here. Let's see. Yeah, there's our members. Yeah, you can make it so that it emails you. We can add new people. Files. But anyway, uh, probably the nicest aspect of this software is that, uh, you know, if you're not using this, and you're just, if you've got just a Word document, and let's say you upload the Word document into D2L, or you upload it into, uh, or, e or you email it to somebody, uh, you know, you might have two or three versions of that document out, and maybe uh, Frank works on it, but then I've been working on it too, so now we got these different versions, and it kind of gets messy that way. Uh, with Teams, though, you could just have the file here, and then we could all be working on it at the same time or different times, it doesn't matter, and then it would keep track of all those uh, changes. Okay. I think that brings us up to... Research tools. Uh, so this will be uh, fairly quick here, but this is a, another one of the problems with the collaborating on a big research project is you don't know who's read what articles, or maybe you, you read this chapter of a book, this person read that article, and you don't have a, a convenient way to keep all those materials together. Uh, so these tools can help with that, uh, the ones we've been talking about. You know, the Teams, you could upload the files there. Um, Google Drive, you know, it's easy just to make a folder share the folder with people. I'll show you what that looks like. So for this project we were working on, I've been working on with some colleagues, every now and then we'll find an article that we want everybody to read uh, This part of the group, right? So we just upload it here to a shared folder called Readings, and then we can all be looking at the same article. We don't have to search for it. You know, it's just there, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, but let me uh, jump over to the SCSU library. Oh, something is not right there. SCSU oh. library. Yes. <laughs> uh, so some people are very intimidated by this. The only thing they ever want to use is Google, uh, which is not good because it's kind of hard just using Google to find the peer reviewed journal articles and, and academic sources. So, what I always tell people to do. You know, if you're not sure how to get started with research or it's been a while or you're not sure, like, what would be the best database to use for this or, uh, you know, how, how do I know this is a good source, you know, anything like that, or maybe you're just having trouble finding relevant stuff, uh, you know, I just go to this Ask a Librarian 
thing. <laughs> you know, I use this all the time. It's just, uh, you know, if I'm using it, there's no reason in the world why, why you shouldn't be using it, too. Uh, you know, this is basically folks whose job it is to consult with you and, you know, help you get started with research. Now, they probably won't do it for you, but they can certainly point you in the right direction and just basically save you a lot of time. You know, so sometimes people are reluctant to ask for help with things. You know, I, I don't get that. Uh, you know, they know a lot more about the library than I do. They, they work there. Right? <laughs> so, so I just uh, really love this tool, Ask a Librarian. Uh, that's where I always start my uh, research. Uh, but there are some other tools here. We can, of course, just go to the library page, searching the library sources. So we've been doing a lot of work with constructed languages. Let's just say I type that in. Okay, so then I get a list, and this is kind of cool. So maybe you're looking through here, and you see this is not, you know, that looks relevant, this doesn't look relevant, uh, that sort of thing. But you might not realize you can just click on these these items as you're scrolling along here. You know, and then once you get a little list going, you can email it to yourself, or you can add it here with this. And, uh, you know, when you're done with your research, you'll have a list of uh, favorite items. So I guess there's not a whole lot to look at here. Let's see if we can bring one up. Somewhere here there should be a... Yes. So here's where you get to the uh, the full text of this, and from there you can download it and put it in your Google folder or your uh, D2L folder, or again, whatever tool you're using. Yes, and don't forget about this button, too. You know, this is something that gets... Everybody's always wor worried about, like, how do I cite that? You know, MLA, APA, there's so many, you know, how do I do it? Uh, they don't even realize you, you don't really even have to know this stuff <laughs> uh, you can just from the library page for the article uh, if you click on the citation button you can get the mla eighth edition the apa chicago i think there's it even has some of the older editions here so you if you wanted to instead of you know bothering with this you just copied the citation to the clipboard and then you know, paste it right into your documents pretty cool Okay, and then Google Scholar. So I know a lot of you are probably already familiar with this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it. But this, you know, basically what I'll say about this Google Scholar, it's better than just open Google searching if you're looking for peer-reviewed material. And since it's Google, it's a lot easier with this to quickly share things that you find. You can you know, stick things in your library, and it's got a similar functionality to what we were looking at before. Uh, once, you, once you're done adding stuff to your library, you can get a big list of things and, and either print it out or email it. Or uh, uh, I think it'll export to a couple of different programs, uh, professional bibliography programs, kind of above our <laughs> needs at the moment. Uh, but yeah, here it is. The little star will save it, and that'll put it in my library. You know, just while I'm at it, you know, one of the nice things about Google uh, Scholar that I like so much is you can see how many other articles have cited that article. Uh, so that's telling you basically how popular it is, how useful, how, how key is this article to the rest of the community. You know, how many other academics have read the article and, and, and cited it somehow in their work. So, you know, it's kind of a foundational piece if it's got, like this first one here, says it's been cited 40 times. And I can actually get a list here of who, who cited that. That'll give me a pretty good idea of whether that article is kind of a well-established part of the conversation around the topic, uh, or if it's just kind of been ignored. Of course, if it's a brand new article, it's not going to be cited. <laughs> it hasn't had enough time. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, that's a pretty good uh, way. And I like the related articles, too. So if you find an article that's really relevant to your purposes, you can just click that and maybe find you know two or three more. Boom, boom, boom. And then as if all this isn't nice enough, some of these will actually have the PDF here. So you could again, just grab that, pop it right into your Google Drive, and you'll have it. You won't have to try to find it again. So it's just a lot of uh, useful stuff here. I think that's about... Oh, yeah, one other thing is this alert button, which is really cool if you uh, want to stay on top of a topic, especially if it's uh, you know something where there's 
articles will be coming out about the topic periodically. You can create an alert, and what that will do, you can have it email you whenever it uh, detects a new article related to that topic. Uh, so that's very handy. Uh, stuff's coming out all the time. You don't want to have to, you know, try to remember to search every day. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a computer. It can do it for you. Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, the drafting tools, you know, I feel like we've kind of talked about this already. It's just up to you. If you really like that Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint environment and you want to stay with that environment, uh, you could certainly use Teams. Invite people uh, to the... Uh, you know, to the document. Uh, they could work on it together with you. Uh, very easy with either of those tools. Uh, and then finally, uh, revision. So, you know, once you've drafted things and you're trying to get down to like the proofreading or the editing or the revising, there's several tools that can help you with that. Let's take a go back to this article or this uh, document for a second. So there's a tab here called Review. And once we open this, uh, we can turn on Track Changes. I guess you could say uh, for everyone. And what this does is every time now somebody makes a, makes a fresh change, it will uh, indicate it somehow, put in a different color. You can see it's underlined. And then you can have your other group members come in and either approve the change that you made with Accept or they could reject it. They don't like the change. You can scroll through and you'll see the different changes that are made. Uh, this can be very useful. You know, when you're really, you don't want to just go into a document necessarily and be making changes and other people might not realize what you changed. <laughs> so this is a good way to like really make it clear uh, what you changed. And you can also do these comments along the side. Reconsider this opening, or, you know, whatever the case may be. And we kind of looked at that before where somebody else can come in and reply to this or they could resolve it, you know, just like with the Google Docs, basically. Uh, and then there's also a button here. Let's see if I can find it. Editor, autocorrect. Yes, word count, always useful. It may not let me do this since I've only got one document to look at here. Let's make another document. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mark all is red. Copy link. Somewhere here. Let's see if we can find this. There's a way to compare documents. Maybe I can't do this in Teams now that I'm looking at this. I know you can do this in the uh, standalone version. Okay, so I, as far as I can tell, they don't, they don't have the functionality they <laughs> in that uh, Teams version. I'll show you what it looks like though if you want to see in the uh, regular version of Microsoft Word. So basically what can happen if you have, a, say, a rough draft version of a document saved somewhere, and then another draft of the document, say a final draft, or two different drafts, or you know, whatever the case may be. If you want to look at two documents side by side, uh, you can do this in the desktop version of Word, at least. Pop there might be a way to do it in the online version, I just wasn't able to find it. But if you click on that Review tab, there's a Compare. And then you can either do it like I got here, where you're looking at both versions, or you can try to combine the versions. And it splits it up into these little frames for you, so you can see the document that you're comparing, the original, and then the revised document. Uh, so this is kind of handy, you know, if, again, if you want to look really closely at two different versions of a document uh, to see what you like and dislike and so on and uh, so forth. Okay. So let's see, is there anything else? <laughs> uh, revision tools for Google. Um, again, I feel like we kind of looked at those already. Uh, Adobe Acrobat is kind of fun. So this, this is getting more, you know, once you do start working, uh, doing writing for a living, you know, a lot of times they work with uh, Adobe PDF. They like the typesetting. 
So basically they can make it look really, really professional with this and then they can go straight to, uh, to print format. So it's kind of this ultimate, you know, what you look at is what you get. You know, they call it the proofreading process. You're getting these uh, proof files. So it's basically what is going to show up in the printed copy. Uh, so you get something like a, like this from them, and then they will have little comments in here, maybe little things they want you to look at. Uh, so I'll show you how to how to do that. Um, so let's just say you wanted to highlight this. Let me just go back so you can see it from the beginning. Uh, so we can expand this little tool set over here. And again, this is Adobe Acrobat I'm working with here. And there is a uh, send for comments and a comment tool. So very similar to a uh, word here. You can just make a comment here, check this bit. Let me know if it looks okay. You know, you could be making those kind of comments and post it. And then you could send this PDF to the uh, next person in the group and they can look at that and say, yeah, change that or don't change that. So it's just kind of another way to work with a document. And then another tool, another thing you can do with this is if it's a research article that you're working with, you know, with your group, you could also make comments, you can highlight things. You know, maybe you think that's something you should be citing in your paper. Uh, you can highlight it with that tool and say, we, we could use this bit on page four. You know, <laughs> you know again, um, just trying to give you some ideas here. I don't know how you might actually uh, want to end up implementing this, but it, it's a very powerful tool. And a lot of people like the PDF format just looks nicer it's a little bit easier for people to read i think i like the way you can scroll through these documents a lot better than a word document but you know your mileage may vary on that uh okay well i think that'll do it about uh 36 something minutes worth of uh tools you can consider when you're collaborating i hope that you will try these uh, in addition of course to the uh the groups let me go ahead and say a little bit about that too uh, so in your in your course for 403, 503, I've put you into these blogging groups, and you should have your own discussion board within that group. I'm not quite sure what it looks like from your perspective here. But D2L, yeah, so here's some groups. Uh, so within D2L, you uh, have a discussion board just for your group, and you also have a locker, which is kind of that basically like a Google Drive folder uh, where you could put things relevant to your group in there. Uh, but this will, as far as I know, only be visible to your, to me and your group. So if you want to discuss things with a class, you know, for the rough drafts and things, you want to put those into these uh, uh, folders here, or uh, topics here, the blog drafts one, blog drafts two. Uh, but I did want you just to have some groups. You, know, some, you, could, you might want to have private discussion with your group, uh, so you could do that there. Here on D2L, yeah, if you didn't want to do the uh, the Zoom or Teams, or <laughs> you know, any of those other options. Okay. And I think that will do it for this. If you've, uh, you know, maybe you've got tools you like to use, you want to share, you didn't see uh, here mentioned here, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, that's basically how I learned about this stuff <laughs> it's from you all. Uh, so if you've got a you know, particular piece of software you like working with, you find really helpful for uh, collaboration, uh, do let me know about that. Or if you have questions about any of this stuff, um, you know, please uh, ask. We're just general comments. Love to hear from you. Uh, but I'll stop it here and see you next time.